All right, guys, we're at the uh, last chapter of the series, um, picking black belt locks. Um, this is one red belt lock. Um, as I picked another red with the brown belts, I just picked one more red. Um, this is a sleeved ASA 700 with six gins and one tapered pin, and it's red belt. Um, pretty tough. We have a Asa Twin Max. This is the newest iteration of the twins. Um, six Asa barrels, just like the uh, Max Plus Restricted. And this has the five pins, five false gated sliders in this one for the sidebar. And lastly, we uh, have the regular black belt version of the Asa 700 which is pretty much identical to the uh, DC 500 that we picked up brown, except this one has actual <laughs> effective counter milling, very effective counter milling. This is easily harder, in my opinion, than picking the uh, the Twin Max. So, um, and you'll get to see that as the videos progress, but I'll go ahead and give you a spoiler. We picked them all, so... Um, just go ahead and let you guys check out the rev pick and the shape it's in after having gone through white to black um and you'll see in this these videos i'm really going heavy on the tension especially on the 700 here and pushing those barrels through the counter milling and using the hook as a flag for the side pins you can see the pick is still straight it's not bent and you can tell in the videos I'm not going easy on it. Same for the uh, uh, the slightly deeper hook. Um, I hate to call it a medium, really, because it's not. It's basically another profile of a short hook. There's very little difference. If I can get that zoomed in. There's very little difference in height. So it's more different. It's more a difference in profiles than it is a short and medium. But I guess technically we'll call that a medium. But uh, both of them are holding up. We can see that slight little bend that was there when we got this particular one. The new one they sent me is still right here. I haven't used it. I've used this one pick from white to black. It's held up great. The feedback I had no problems telling when I was setting a gin on this lock or that which is why i chose these locks um also just because they're seven pins um anything just to add some extra difficulty to it to show that this thing has actually good feedback um i'm really impressed with this lock or this pick um i do hope to see them release one in 20 or 15 thousandths uh i would actually i would absolutely carry one of these um, probably not in my pocket, but I would definitely throw one of these in my truck. I would throw one of these in my laptop bag for work. Um, it's a great little pick. Um, and to be 100% honest, when I started this series, I had absolutely rock bottom expectations. I did not think this thing would hold up for long. I didn't think it would last. And I have put this thing through hell, picking dimple locks, uh, there's, like I, said, like I said in the other videos, there's locks that I failed to pick with it. You know, I couldn't pick them just because the profile wasn't good <clears throat> or I wasn't getting good feedback like with a serrated multi lock. But I've spent like hours working on that lock, trying to do it, and this thing still held up. Everything is still tight. They're not uh, floppy. You know, I did have to oil it or lube it with some Houdini when I first got it. I haven't polished them. You can look at the finish. If I can get that to you. They're not, uh, that just made focus worse, didn't it? Come on, focus on my hand. You can see the, the finish isn't pristine. They're not polished. They're still just plain 25,000 picks and uh, they held up great. I mean, I'm really honestly surprised by it. Um, so, all in all, don't listen to the haters when it comes to this thing. If they haven't used it, they don't know what they're talking about. Um, 
this curve on the bottom made it very comfortable. I didn't have hot spots, blisters, or anything on my hands picking with it. Um, something like a moldy pick actually causes me more discomfort. Um, these small, I mean, I, it's not much bigger, but it does make a difference. I don't know what it is, but I will get hand cramp after a, a, a long picking session, but I will still get hand cramps with these. I didn't get that with this. <clears throat> I was honestly really impressed with it. Um, uh, the uh, co-owner of Covert Instruments actually reached out to me when I was at about brown belt on these in a series to thank me for giving it an honest shot and giving their products a chance. And uh, he asked me for constructive feedback on the pick and what I think. What I would love to see is let's ditch these rakes, especially for more lock sport focused pickers. Let's ditch these. We're never using them. Um, give me a deeper hook. At a minimum, give me a deeper hook, and I want a either a small flag or an even bigger, <laughs> bigger hook so that I can use it like a flag. But uh, other than that, um, and a th and a th and thinner picks. I want thinner, and I want hooks, all hooks. So please listen to me. Make me a pick. Send it to me. I will pick locks with it and sing its praises. So uh, let's see if we can make that happen. <laughs> but uh, all in all, like again, um, I didn't really think it was going to be much. It's uh, really impressed me. I am going to throw this one in my truck just to keep it. But uh, like I said, uh, I'm really impressed with them. Their customer service was great. Um, and all in all, I'm actually really happy with it and glad I got to do this and uh, show people that, uh, you know, it's not a broken pick. It's not a compromise. It's actually a very solid piece of kit. So um, I'm going to shut up now so you guys can fast forward through the picking videos and see the guts or whatever you want to do or stop the video here. It don't matter to me. You guys have a good one. All right, we got a sleeved Ruko 700 here. This has six gins and one taper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Four is binding now. Five, six, seven. One, two, three is binding now. Four, five, six, seven. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. A bit more plug movement. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm sure seven is good. All right, <clears throat> let's throw our forty thousandths right here. Actually, I think I grabbed. I did. I just want to put that there to hold that. I put the wrong tensioner in the top. So I'm going to go with the 50 up top. The 40 here. And then. Okay.
That's three. You can see our false set getting deeper. There we go. <clears throat> See that's picked. We'll lock it back up. We'll pop the C clip off. Tailpiece off. Okay. And we'll try to get the shin in. Make sure we know where we're, the gap. There's a sleeve, which makes getting the shim in kind of a pain. Just dropped a driver into the gap. And we'll move that there. And that gives me the room I'll need to get in there. I'm trying to see it is 90% of the work. Of course, it's easier for whatever reason when you're not trying to do it on camera. There we go. I did this last time without a shim, and I won't say it was a gutting disaster, but the shim was getting, I mean, the clip right there, the groove is so big that I was getting pins caught in, on the, in there. So you don't want to do that. Okay. Ninety percent certain everything should go fine. Yep. Okay. see let me grab a sharper pick and we can see the sleeve and those act as counter milling for the gins tweezers we got a gin on one Get that spring out. I 
again on two, if you guys can see. There's three. There's four. Here comes seven. It's a standard with the tapered, I should say. I just launched that one. And I launched that one, of course. All right, nothing else in there. I'll give you guys a close up of the pins. So we got six gin spools that all needed to be float picked and one tapered pin and that's it for the sleeve 700 all right we got the acid twin max <clears throat> this is the black belt version i'm gonna shut up and pick now
Oh, I think everything is good. Or at least the tops are as far as I can set them at this point. Swap over to the side pins. Putting that in to get a better bite. Okay. There we go. All right. <clears throat> that is a little easier with a flag than using this on this particular one. Um, or this particular model, I should say. Um, all right. <clears throat> Put that in frame. Since my 700 gut was a little sloppy because of the... Uh, can get the follower to fit or the shims and all that good stuff so let's just do this we'll take this off the top See 
them over there and I'll move them. Drop the side barn springs right quick. I can see our body. We have our sidebar groove. Everything else is fine. Okay. Back to this. Did my there's my other sidebar spring. Not lose that. So you can see a uh, true and false gates come on out of there. up and down, it just doesn't want to come out. Get up out of there. Let me get the other ones out first. That's number one. Two. Like I said, this, it'll go up and down like it's supposed to. It doesn't want to come out. So, let me fight with it for a second. Come on, don't be stubborn. There we go. I'm gonna put those in the wrong spot. There we go. And we'll get our five little springs and I'll show you guys the sidebar. One, two, Four, five. Let you see the counter milling. Nice and sharp. And that's the ring you got to work with for that. So pretty nice open keyway on the Max Plus or Twin Max, whatever you want to call it. And there's our coating you can see. Actually, it was like that. So I had a very low lift on one, a very medium lift on two and three, or actually still kind of low. A minimum lift on one and five, and a max lift on three. So that's it for the ASA Twin Max. Uh, thanks. Right, we got an ASA 700 here. This is a black belt version. It's got a Christmas trees, gins, and tapered like the DC 500, except much better tolerances. Two. Three. Four is good. Seven is binding. Six. One, two, three, 
Okay. Reset that. One, two, three, seven, six, five, one, two, three, seven. making sure I'm not getting any counter rotation on those two trees, which means I was able to preset them early. All right. <clears throat> Okay.
think we got four. Let me check my plug. Oh, nope. Okay. Well, it's still good. If you don't mess up. All right, <clears throat> so there's an ASA 700. Gins and trees. Mm, pliers, I have to think. Okay. Always shim your S700s. There is drill protection holes. They will snag your gins and you will brick a lock. And if it's not grubbed, like mine's not, you'll be uh, hating yourself. Make sure I got that. And the tolerances on the 700 are very tight, so... You definitely want to make sure you got everything right. Okay. See, there's drill protection holes. Those will. Okay. Oh. I can't remember where those go. My asset is slightly mastered. Okay, let me fix that. Just so I put everything back right. So that one went there. And this one goes there. Okay. and show you guys the milling. No milling on three, five, and seven, but there is milling on six. And I went clockwise, so that was nice and sharp on that side. Okay. y'all can see that there's our Christmas tree in the right orientation another Christmas tree let me get that spring out let's see our tree tapered
my gin. standard. Well, it's another taper actually, but whatever. I'll try my best to keep from popping this one out. You can see the gin head. tapered pin. Okay. Get y'all close up on that. So we can see our Christmas trees and our gins and our three tapered pins. We got some torpedo key pins. They don't put those with the masters. So I should have had torpedoes there. And that probably could have been one, but I bought this used and that's how it came. So that's how we picked it. But that's the ASA 700. All right, thanks.